your options have gone. You've run out of your contacts. Your money can't buy a solution. You are desperate. Dr. Tony Evans says sometimes the last place we want to be in life is exactly where the Lord knows we need to go. So there are times in our lives when God will allow us to be overwhelmed in order to give us an experience of a bigger view of a bigger God. This is The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans, author, speaker, senior pastor of Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship in Dallas, Texas, and president of The Urban Alternative. There are some people who just seem to be able to talk their way out of any situation. Well, let's join Dr. Evans as he explains today how God can give the words we speak that same kind of power. A man went to his physician because he had a major problem. The doctor said, well, what's wrong? He says, I hurt all over. Every part of my body is in pain. He says, well, that's a little odd. Um, let's delve a little deeper. He says, I want you to touch your ear. And he touched his ear and went, ah. He said, well, touch your forehead. He went, touched his forehead. He went, ooh, touch your knee. He touched his knee and went, ah. Touch your elbow. He touched your elbow. He went, ooh. He said, idiot, you got a dislocated finger. Sometimes it just feels like everything is wrong. No matter where you touch, no matter which way you turn, it seems like everything hurts. That all of life has caved in on you. There are not too many people who are of an adult age who have not been through an experience where you're literally overwhelmed with your circumstances. And there's no direction you can turn where it doesn't hurt. We've all, at various levels, been in situations that appear to be unfixable because they run so deep, have gone so long, and hurt so bad. Such was the situation Jehoshaphat finds himself in, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. He finds himself, and in fact all of Israel, in a problem they can't fix. It came about in verse 1, the sons of Moab and Ammon, together with the Minyites, came to make war against Jehoshaphat. He was under attack, and he was surrounded by a problem he couldn't fix. He was outnumbered because all of these armies had come together to attack him. It would have national consequence because they were attacking the whole nation. There was a simultaneous attack, so it was all coming to him at the same time. And you know when everything hurts because you're just overwhelmed. There is this sense of hopelessness and helplessness that surrounds you. It's like the man who says, I've got so many problems in my life that if one more thing goes wrong, it's going to take me two weeks to get around to worrying about it. Because it just keeps on coming. So overwhelming was this problem that Jehoshaphat faced that it says in verse 3, he was afraid. He was scared to death. Because that's how it is when there's no place to turn. When something is wrong over here and over here and over here and over here and it just collapses on you. You become like, like Popeye. I've taken all I can stand and I can't take no more because you're overwhelmed with the realities of life and the pain that they cause you you're like Roberto Duran when he was fighting Sugar Ray Leonard and all he could say is no mas no mas no more with one major difference when you say, I can't take no more, the ref still doesn't stop the fight. Because more comes. Some of us, if we were honest enough, would challenge the, the theological dictum. 
that God won't put more on you than you can bear. Because we know what it feels like to have more on us than we can bear. We've just been overwhelmed by life, pain, problems. Sometimes it's finances we can't get ourselves out of and the struggle of debt. Sometimes it's health where the doctors can't fix it. Sometimes it's a relationship that just keeps going from bad to worse. Sometimes it's a career situation that has you trapped. Sometimes it may even be an addiction you cannot overcome and you feel helpless, hopeless, overwhelmed, outnumbered, and powerless. That's Jehoshaphat's scenario. Surrounded in every direction by the enemy. The enemy is now converging on you and there is no more peace and calm in your life. So that's the problem. It is a problem you have faced or will face. It's most certainly a problem you've seen others face. And that is to be overwhelmed by life. Life wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have to live it. The reality is you do have to live it. And sometimes it can get real bad. That's his scenario. That's our scenario. So we find Jehoshaphat overwhelmed. And he is going to give us today a principle that I simply have called in today's message, victory in your voice. Particularly when you are in a situation you can't fix. And we know he's in that situation because of verse 12. Oh, our God, will you not judge them for we are powerless before this great multitude who are coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So this sermon today is for the powerless among us. Those of us who don't have the strength to deal with life as it has crashed in on us. Today is for those whose knees are too weak to get up on your own. For those who've been overwhelmed by mess and your only hope is a miracle. It's for those who don't know what to do. Anybody ever been in a situation you don't know what to do? My options are gone. I don't have any options. It's too big, it's too deep. It's too painful, it's too radical, it hurts too bad. Jehoshaphat finds himself in this situation and this problem leads him to prayer. It says in verse 3, he turned his attention to seek the Lord. He turns his attention to seek the Lord because <laughs> he can't fix it. You always know when God wants your undivided attention because there's nobody else to talk to who can make it any better. Your options have gone. You've run out of your contacts. Your money can't buy a solution. You are desperate. He gathered all of Israel, all of Judah together, verse 4, and everyone came, all the cities of Judah, to seek the Lord. God, you've got to fix this. We can't. We need heaven because earth has gone bad on us. This leads him to a marvelous prayer beginning in verse 5. He stood in the assembly in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, the God of our fathers, are you not the God in the heavens? And are you not ruler over the kingdoms of the nations? Power and might are in your hand. 
so that no one can stand against you. Do you not, O oh Lord, drive out the inhabitants of the land before your people Israel and give to the descendants of Abraham your friend forever? For they lived in it and you have built a sanctuary in your name saying, should evil come upon us or the sword or the judgment or the pestilence or the famine and we stand before this house, before you, your name, cry to you and you will hear and deliver us. That prayer is deep. His problem leads him to open up his mouth in prayer. But there are specific components to that prayer, and Dr. Evans will come back to tell us about them in just a moment. Right now, he's here with this thought for us. Dr. Evans? The greatest need in our world today is for Jesus Christ, the living Savior who died on the cross, who's risen and sits on the right hand of the Father. The more people who meet Jesus, the more lives will be transformed. And that's the message of the Urban Alternative. That's the essence of my ministry. Would you become a partner with us at the Urban Alternative so that we can take the good news of Jesus everywhere we can, through every means we can, for the transformation of lives? Without the faithful support of listeners just like you, there would be no way we could keep Tony's teaching on this station. So as our way of saying thanks to anyone who can come alongside us right now with any contribution, no matter the amount, we'd like to send you a copy of Tony's brand new book, Watch Your Mouth. It talks about the power of what we say to either do good or do damage, focusing on ways to develop the self-control we need to tame our tongues. In America, freedom of speech is a right. But Dr. Evans says there's a difference between speaking freely and speaking wisely. Watch Your Mouth will teach you to choose words that are instruments of healing, not weapons of war. So drop by TonyEvans.org today, make a donation of any size before this special offer runs out, and request your copy of Watch Your Mouth. Again, visit TonyEvans.org today for the details, or call us at one 800 800-3222, where staff members are on hand day and night, seven days a week to help you. That's 1-800-800-3222. Right now, Dr. Evans is back with more of today's lesson. Let's join him. Prayer is an invitation to heaven to address something going wrong on earth. It's calling on eternity to visit time. He cries out to God, and he reminds God about who he is. And then he reminds God about what he said. And then he introduces God to the problem he is facing. He starts off by acknowledging the greatness of God. He uses his mouth to declare the greatness of God. Now, that becomes very important when you got a big problem because that means you need something that can give you a bigger solution. You will never discover that God is all you need until God is all you have. Until he is the only option left to address this problem. So there are times in our lives when God will allow us to be overwhelmed in order to give us an experience of a bigger view of a bigger God. Because the problem is so great, there is no human solution to fix it. And so he seeks the Lord. And he calls on heaven to visit history. And he says, this is who you are and this is what you said. Now, if you don't know who he is and you don't know what he said, you don't know what to say. If your view of God is small, then he will be the last resort and even when you make him the resort, he is so small you do not expect much from it. And if you don't know what he said, because he quotes what God has said, he said, you said that when our enemies come on us, if we would call on your name, you would address our enemies. You said that. Let me tell you something God will allow you to do. 
He will allow you to hold him hostage to his word. He will allow you, he, you to hold him hostage to his word. But now if you don't know what he said, then you can't hold him hostage because you don't know what to use. God doesn't just give you his word for a Bible study. He gives you his word to use in a crisis. He said, this is what you said. And you said that when our enemies come upon us, if we would go to this house, the temple, and we would cry out to you from this house, you would hear us and deliver us. You said that. And I'm holding you hostage to your word in a crisis we can't fix. I'm calling on you to overrule a bad situation. Sometimes in life, history gets weak. And you need something stronger over here to overrule weakness over there so that you can deal with the limitations of life. He's calling on God because he's in a crisis. And sometimes you're in a ditch and you can't get out of it, but if Clark Kent is on the bus, it changes your strategy. There's a lady who was... Uh, living out in the boondocks and there was a desperate need for electricity. She did not have electricity going to her home and finally they, they ran electricity. She'd been living all of her life without electricity. They finally ran electricity to her home. They ran electricity to her home, but months later they discovered that only a few units of the electricity was ever utilized. She had electricity, but Maybe something is wrong and it's not registering uh, the amount of usage that's taking place. So they sent a representative to her house and knocked on her door and they said, ma'am, we noticed that you have not been using electricity. Do you use your electricity? Oh, she says, yeah, every day. Well, well how, how long is it on? Well, she said, well, it's not long, on long. I, I turn it on long enough to light my kerosene lamp. And then I turn it off. <laughs> See, a lot of us use God to light our human efforts. We use God to give us a little something, something for us to operate independently of him. We come to church for a little electrical charge so that we can leave and operate with our own human devices, our kerosene humanity even though we've gotten connected with the power of the universe. God palms the universe like a basketball player palms a ball. He, he has it under his control. Now, just by way of a statement, you don't have to look at it now, but if you will look at the end of chapter 19, Jehoshaphat has cleaned up Jerusalem. He's uh, dealt with the sin in the community because you don't get access to heaven if you're not willing to address sin on earth. And so he addresses the sin on earth which gives him access to the authority in heaven. And then something amazing happens. Verse 14. We've moved from a problem to a prayer and that leads to a prophet. Then in the midst of the assembly, the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. Verse 15, he said, listen all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord to you, do not fear or be dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but the Lord's. Mm. Follow this now. We have a problem that's led us to a prayer and now we have a prophet. The prophet says, don't be afraid. This is not your fight. This battle belongs to the Lord. What they got was a rhema word. The job of a prophet in the Bible was to deliver an applicational word 
to God's people. Prophets not only declared the word of God, they declared the word of God to a specific situation. So it was not a general word, it was always a specific word in a specific scenario. And the reason why there were different prophets is because there were different situations. So the prophet had to give a rhema word. The prophet comes and gives a specific scenario answer to their specific situation. This morning, there is a general word to the whole congregation coming from me. A prophetic word is a specific word about what you ought to do in your specific scenario you're dealing with. That's why it says the spirit of the Lord came to the prophet because it is the job of the spirit to give you your word from this word. What should you do right now about this? That's a rhema word. That's a word uttered to you about your dilemma. And so the prophet tells them, verse 17, you need not fight in this battle. Station yourself, stand and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. Notice the first phrase of verse 17. You do not need to fight in this battle because you may have to fight in the next battle and you did fight in the previous battle but this one is not yours. Why? Because God has different strokes for different folks and different methods in different scenarios. What he wants you to do today may be different than the strategy he wants you to use tomorrow that may have been different than the strategy that you used yesterday. And see, unless you are led by the Spirit, you'll think because God wanted it done that way yesterday, he wants you to repeat it today. He says, no, on this one, you don't have to fight. You just have to station yourself. That's what it means to walk with the Lord. It means to give him the freedom to steer you, to guide you, and to govern you. Dr. Evans will come back in a moment with a final word to say about the power of praise. First, though, if you'd like to hear the full-length version of today's message, you can get it along with 10 others in our current teaching series, Watch Your Mouth. It's loaded with plenty of practical advice about keeping your tongue from causing trouble. And you can find out all about it by visiting us online at TonyEvans.org. When you do, don't forget to check out that brand new book I mentioned earlier, also called Watch Your Mouth. It builds on what we're learning in our current study. And for a limited time, it's yours with our thanks when you help us keep Tony's teaching on this station with a contribution of any amount. Details are waiting for you right now at TonyEvans.org. Or you're always welcome to call our resource request line at 1-800-800-3222 where staff members are standing by 24-7 to help you. Again, 1-800-800-3222. Tomorrow, more from Dr. Evans on the importance of letting God hear the victory in your voice. Right now, though, he's back with this closing thought for today. Notice the end of verse 18. He fell down before the Lord and worshiped the Lord. The end of verse 19 stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a very loud voice. The middle of verse 21, who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in holy attire. Verse 22, when they began singing and praising the Lord. I hope you see it. A problem led to a prayer that resulted in a prophet that brought about praise. If you want to know God's address, if you want to know where God lives, he lives at a house on a street called praise. That's why the Lord says in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 18, he dwells in the gates of praise. The Alternative with Dr. Tony Evans is brought to you by The Urban Alternative and is made possible by the generous contributions of listeners like you.